temple is rebuilt. Is there a messiah? In Judaism? In Judaism. Jews invented the messiah. But it's not the same messiah that most people think about. Okay. Because right? when Christians think of the messiah, they think of someone who's divine. Yeah. They think of, you know, the end of days. What we have for the messiah is a man, a king of this earth, who's going to bring peace among the nations in this world. And he will not be divine. He will not be divine. And Euron tells me this mortal messiah has a very specific to-do list. According to Jewish tradition, he has three things he's supposed to do. Number one, he's going to reconstitute the Jewish kingdom or the Jewish state. Number two, he's going to bring peace with the neighbors. And number three, he's going to rebuild that rebuild temple. Rebuild the temple. Here we are. This is 2015. What are you going to do now? What is contemporary Jewish position on the temple? The Jews think of the world in terms of this dream that once existed in the world that was taken away. The Jews want to bring back into the world. That is the reconstruction of the temple. The reconstruction of the temple as the, the, the crowning symbol of this era of justice and peace that we're supposed to be ass assisting to bring back into the world. I don't choose except Jesus. If you look at all the messianic uh, prophecies, the idea of Messiah is that he's supposed to ingather in the exiles and rebuild the temple. That there has to be this idea of, of uh, being a, a, a savior, salvation, of, of helping the Jews. And at the time that you know Jesus was living historically, the Jews still lived in Israel. The temple was still standing. There was no exile. So it's kind of amongst a variety, wide variety of other reasons. It would be like um, you know expecting someone to get penicillin when they're not even sick. I mean, there's no there was no need for him to have come at that time if it. There's no need for the Messiah to come when the temple is standing. Now that the temple is destroyed and the people are dispersed, now we need a Messiah. So that's, that's one gigantic reason. Another reason is that it's a mixture of a lot of um, Greek myth with, uh, with uh, Jewish kind of uh, narrative, Jewish stories. So we don't have an idea of the Messiah for us is a person. It's not a deity. It's not... Um, you know, a, a demigod where, you know, God is the father and the, there's a, f a physical mother that's present in, you know, Greek and Roman mythology. There's a wide variety of different Greek myths where the, the God um, impregnates a, a woman and, and it's, it's Greek myth. So when um, Christianity kind of wanted to attract non-Jewish followers, you know, pagan followers that they had to mix the tropes, mix the narratives. You can't have it both ways. It can't be a god and the descendant in Jewish law, the, the Messiah, has to be a descendant of King David. That is, the father has to be King David. The father can't be kind of a, a deity. A moment. I'll do just a quick overview on this guy for anybody who hasn't heard of him. I learned of him through the channel Wallytron 101 very grateful for him pointing this guy out because there's extremely strange coincidences surrounding this guy. A lot of characteristics that are similar to what the false prophet will have. So a quick overview on this guy is that he grew up as a Jewish person, obviously, but became extremely proficient in the Torah and the Talmud and all these different Jewish texts, which in itself is a supernatural sign and wonder, really, because it's said by the age of 15 that he was already proficient in the Talmud, which is like hundreds of books so for like any human being to ever be proficient in that is shocking they say that this guy's level of understanding in the torah and the talmud is only seen in like rarely in throughout generations so that's what gives him the title the yanuka somebody who is just proficient profoundly proficient in the torah and the talmud and all the jewish laws and texts and beliefs that they have and through his understanding, he's gaining a lot of prominence in Israel. Many of the high-level Jewish rabbis and Jewish people are just in awe and going to him 
for their wisdom and knowledge. This just reminds me of his understanding of the Torah and all this just reminds me of the reference of Jesus in the Bible and how there was multiple times when Jesus would be teaching and these people were saying, how does this guy know this things? He isn't even like a scholar. Just an interesting characteristic there. An interesting quote on this YouTube channel about him. That I've come here to meet Yoram Hazani, an expert in the politics and theology of Judaism. I want to know why the end of days is so closely tied to this city. You're looking at the absolute epicenter of the monotheistic world. Right over there, that's the Dome of the Rock, which according to the Islamic tradition, Muhammad ascended to heaven from right that spot. And over there, the, uh, the Mount of Olives and Gethsemane below where Jesus and his disciples used to meet. And of course, down here is the, the Western Wall Plaza, the holiest shrine prayer location for all of the Jewish people in Judaism. Now, this whole area is called the Temple Mount. This is the Temple Mount. The temple was a building seven stories high, stood on top of this Temple Mount, on top of that flat area where those trees are. In 20 BC, King Herod the Great built a temple where Jews could worship their god. It was designed to last forever. Herod says, we're going to create the most spectacular physical structure in the entire Middle East, maybe in the entire world. You can see these gigantic stones at the bottom. Those are called Herodian stones. The Jewish temple to the one God stood on top of that mount before there was Islam or Christianity. But in the year 70 AD, the Romans sacked Jerusalem and demolished the temple. In the centuries since, Jews have come to pray at its remains, the Western or Wailing Wall. It was almost 1900 years before the site returned to direct Jewish control in 1967. We are about 70 years into the new Israel. Why hasn't the temple been rebuilt? Two reasons. One is because the Jews aren't ready. And the other is because the Muslims aren't ready. The state of Israel militarily, politically controls this whole area. But the state of Israel gave the Temple Mount area on the top to the Muslims. While the top of the mount is off limits to Jewish religious rites, there are sacred spaces underground, which Yoram says will help me understand the Jewish vision for end times. This is it. We've come to the closest that a human being can come to the Holy of Holies, the most sacred spot in the world. That's the room in the temple that one human being would enter once a year, the high priest on Yom Kippur, on the holiest day of the year, and he would say God's name. Orthodox Jews believe that without this temple, their religious rites are incomplete. So they await the day when their temple is rebuilt. Is there a Messiah? In Judaism? In Judaism. Jews invented the Messiah. But it's not the same Messiah that most people think about. OK. Because right? when Christians think of the Messiah, they think of someone who's divine. Yeah. They think of, you know, the end of days. What we have for the Messiah is a man, a king of this earth, who's going to bring peace among the nations in this world. And he will not be divine. He will not be divine. And Euron tells me this mortal messiah has a very specific to-do list. According to Jewish tradition, he has three things he's supposed to do. Number one, he's going to reconstitute the Jewish kingdom or the Jewish state. Number two, he's going to bring peace with the neighbors. And number three, he's going to rebuild that rebuild temple. Rebuild the temple. Here we are. This is 2015. What are you going to do now? What is contemporary Jewish position on the temple? The Jews think of the world in terms of this dream that once existed in the world that was taken away. The Jews want to bring back into the world. That is the reconstruction of the temple. The reconstruction of the temple as the, the, the crowning symbol 
of this era of justice and peace that we're supposed to be assisting to bring back into the world.